All right. I'm going to talk about some of the uh, fun stuff, and then we'll get to the some of the back going back and talking a little bit about uh, the East Asia aspect of this uh, battle here. The fun stuff is he now has four battleships and a sub in his fleet. <laughs> so uh, he bulled the double double down triple down uh, on the Mediterranean fleet here. So we'll come back to that in just a second. But there's uh, I'm coming back because this is uh, the day that I was answering. Uh, I just posted the video. Um, I think it was US 10, Russia 11, and uh, I know that's a little bit, little bit behind. But I always keep a little bit of delay because I don't want to get, you know, ideas and uh, uh, other people give me ideas, and then I, I feel bad that I do something that I didn't see. So I always have a little bit of delay. Any case, so the questions that have been popping up is why haven't I pushed up? Asia with the U.S. are hitting these coastal territories that are two each with the U.S. and grabbing this income from Japan. And the, 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 the quick and short answer is I really had to make a choice, either fight for the Middle East or push up the East Coast um, of Asia. If I, if I push up the East Coast, and it, it looks tempting because, right, he's only producing two units a turn, and he's only got these handful here, but you got to remember, he's had a lot of air, and if I'd done that earlier, I wouldn't have been doing purges, so he would have had a lot more bombers that he's lost, so I, I think he's lost like six bombers, six Japan bombers over there. So really, one infantry and all his air can do a lot of damage to my stacks, where I was going to need, I would have to move, in order to make advancements to hold a territory, I was going to have to move stacks of at least six to eight infantry to get it. So really, it was either sending everything this way or sending everything this way. To, to take these coastal territories too, I would have to jump my fleet. So my whole fleet would have to be over here. So they would not be able to reach sea zone 34. So this would have been just completely opening up the Persia, TJ, Egypt, Middle East, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more but just even in here, he's been giving me yun and free. He, I've been surprised that he hasn't actually pushed in to challenge me here at least. Um, so I've been happy just to get my one free unit here every turn uh, that he's been allowing. Uh, if I moved into any of these, it, it, you know, it would have been trading back and forth. And like I said, he could trade a lot more efficiently with all his air that he had than I was going to be able to. And again in order to do it efficiently I'd have to have my navy here and they could just pull off of these you know five units off of these guys back and forth and then these guys couldn't be uh, shucking into the southeastern part because I couldn't protect both 61 and 36 from all his Japan air so you know I'd have, to, I'd have to commit either to a stream of infantry going this way which would mean everything pumping here and nothing going this way which would have opened up the door for Germany to take Persia and most likely into India if I, in order to push hard enough up this way to make a difference. But more importantly, uh, because of his fleet here, if I gave up Persia, then he wouldn't have, he would not have to use this fleet to go to TJ and Egypt the several turns like he did, and he would have just started dumping into Northern Africa. So Northern Africa would have fallen really fast, and then. Subsequently, he had been pushing into Africa, and like I said, because my fleet would have to be over here, even if I had it here, um, it would have been hard for me to pin him up in, in this range. So at the very best case scenario, I'd lose these five IPC regularly, well, even these two here, so really seven, you know, IPC constantly lost to push that battle to Japan. And I would be giving that to Germany, and then Germany would have the capability to be potentially pushing into South Africa. And I do not have a very steady flow coming into South Africa. So he very well could have taken Africa, to be frankly honest. So that's what it really boils down to, is if I committed here, I would have given up this, and Germany would have been at the very least got Northern Africa and very likely poured into Southern Africa. The other part is this fleet that I had moved over to 34 for a turn. Um, even in US 11, at that point, the air had reached a point between his fighters and his bombers that I couldn't keep my fleet over there from a one-two punch safely. So I was kind of on a limited basis of when I could do this shift over to C-Zone 34. I had a time window that was shrinking. 
uh, at least in season 36, he can't really get his fighters very easily into a position where they can threaten it without putting them at risk. Because again, if he puts them on the coast, which can reach season 36, then he's got to worry about me using my transports to hit his his fighters. So uh, for the time being, I can be a little, I don't need to have as much defense in the 36, which I am going to need to continue to build defensive planes and ships, uh, carriers and destroyers because of this whole purpose. But all that's to say, um, Persia secondarily was so important in order to squeeze his Mediterranean fleet. If I couldn't get into Persia, he could he could just keep hiding into 16 and building in Caucasus to drop more. The fact that I got to Persia and was able to take Caucasus to prevent him from being able to drop more was a, a key point in this game, to, to put it simply. So, now, this turns out to be interesting because basically, although I missed something that I think he may have missed too, I'm gonna. I gotta re pull out the calculator and check this. But basically, he's making it, making me have to do a one-two hit here, which means I'm gonna have to hit the battleships three times in order to sink them. So he's gonna make it painful for me to wipe this fleet in all likelihood. But the one thing I just realized, and I'm not sure if he realized, uh, he probably did. But he probably did the calculations. UK is gonna take. Uh, TJ so now the Suez is going to be open for these two subs to come in and I actually wasn't even counting on them so I'll have four subs attacking in here so I need to double check what exactly I need um, without the two subs I was going to be comfortable if I got it down to even the carrier with two fighters gave me a 60% chance to wipe all I needed was this sub and destroyer to be out of the picture so um, I'm going to relook at what it's going to take for me to do this uh, clearing. I do have seven fighters that I can hit here and wipe out. Um, but these two subs do change a little bit. That I, I, I was planning on backing out of Persia, but maybe, maybe I can bring enough fighters back to Persia that I can even hold Persia while wiping this fleet, and that would be just triple bonus. So uh, I'm going to go back to my calculator for just a second. So I'm going to pause it for a second. You won't really notice, but. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just have to see what happens and kind of roll with it. it it'll be uh, ishy to put, uh, to try to stack Persia in face of the one, two. It would be costly for him to take it back. Um, I think it's going to really depend on how many UK fighters I have living when I get the Germans down close enough to uh, attack. If I can get them down to like a carrier battleship and the battleships and retreat and still have two fighters that could fly back to Persia, it, it might be worth it then. And try and stay in stack and make him you know, suicide the Germans, uh, excuse me, the Japan into it. I didn't miss the one fighter that he's got there, so he would have one more fighter going in there than I had calculated. But um, the average results is him coming out negative 42 IPC, him clearing Persia, but coming out negative 42 IPC and doing so. I mean, that's pretty good. For me so if i have two uk fighters if i get them down to four battleships one carrier and i have two uk fighters living that could fly over to persia then i might just go ahead and do that um and it may even be worth sacrificing another transport to grab a infantry and aa to throw into persia on us's turn if, if he attacks so we'll see i'm also going to tempt him with northwest europe so i'm going to go ahead and drop my plan is to drop three infantry and an AA here. I'm going to leave France alone, but since he's made Berlin empty, 
and I'm going to kill these fighters, presumably. Then that leaves him two infantry to attack the three in an AA. He's not going to do that. He'll have to bring his bombers to do it and risk them. A, risk them against the AA. B, they'll have to land here, which means they won't be threatening season 36. And C, they would not be attacking Persia then. So we're going to try and stretch his bombers as much as we can here as well. The good news is nothing can hit C-Zone 8 other than his fighters, which, again, hopefully we're planning on wiping them out. But the bombers can't reach C-Zone 8, so that's a free C-Zone. Now, in my wiping of these, my intention is not to use my carriers at all. I plan on pulling the carriers out. Save those IPC for landing the fighters on, because he's still going to have... He's going to build two bombers, probably, and have, again, ten bombers going across the board here that he can bring over that I got to be prepared to build fleet fast for back up here. So all that's to say, I'm repairing India. I'm going to build five units, three for here, two for here. Uh, I'm going to have one left over. I'm going to have my artillery still sitting here. So I'll be one unit short for my guys. Um, but we're also going to go ahead and build a, a, a destroyer, excuse me, because, you know, we don't want him to start dropping subs all of a sudden because of me not having a fleet anymore as well as we're going to get one fighter built in up here as we bring the carriers back. So I have the two carriers, a destroyer, and a fighter to start, you know, in C-Zone 8. <clears throat> so we're going to see what this looks like. It's a big battle. I'm a little nervous about it. But here we go. Should we grab that? I'm going to use this transport to take it just in case things go sideways or look bad and uh, I decide that uh, I don't want to drop the AA and the other infantry. Instead, I can come up here and I can bring this infantry and grab this infantry coming over and then come back. I don't foresee that, but... Just in case, I like to leave the contingency plans in there. I do need to make sure I kill these two fighters first. You know, I'm going to pay attention to which fighters I kill. Kill the ones with the least number of movements, the least amount of gas remaining first and everything. All right. forgetting anything am i missing anything we got 11 units attacking into his two three seven nine i mean i suppose if it's going really well really really well then uh there's a chance that i just let the uk go all the way through with it and not have to hit those uh, battleships twice and leave the U.S. fleet completely surviving. We'll see. So, we're just going to have to take this one roll at a time. Yeah, I hear you, implausible. So average is five hits each. So let's get six hits for me on the first round of rolls. You know, it's interesting. The total power is 30 versus his total power is 29, but he's got 13 hit points to my 11. Oh, three hits is not good. Crap, even the sub hit. Ay, ay, ay. This is why he did it. I need at least three more hits. Son of a gun. This is not good. But we gotta go. We're committed now. Purge is gone. Purge is off the picture now. One hit! Are you kidding me?
Oh, flippity flappity. Oh, I hate sea battles now. I need a hit. You gotta take something out. Oh my goodness. That entire fleet and I killed one ship. That's a disaster. Uh, man made horrible. That, I don't even know what to say. Just at a loss. I am just so at a loss right now. I'm gonna have to, I just have to hope for good dice on the US attack. It's that simple. Those subs better do some major surprise attacking. Man, the U.S. still has a 70%, 72% chance to clear, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just, I just, just, oh my goodness. <laughs> That was a nice waste of everything. Okay. I'm done complaining now. Moving on. to pray sir for some holy dice against the season 15 we need some really good dice because i need some fighters to survive 